Hey guys, my name's Justin and welcome to Healthboro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you do too, make sure to subscribe. Is that right? So for today's video, I thought it would be really interesting to talk about collaboration burnout. So when I say collaboration burnout, I'm talking about like the trends of these like fashion houses doing collaborations with whoever, it doesn't matter. It could be an athletic clothing brand or shoe brand. It could be luxury luxury or luxury and artists, streetwear, whatever. For me, I think we've gotten to a point where like we've seen like collab after collab after collab, like one after another. And it's like at the point where I'm like, okay, is this really what we're gonna do? But I thought it'd be fun to talk about it. I wanna start out giving a little bit of at least what my perceived history is. And you know, like I'm not a professional in this field. So if you have anything that I missed, let me know. But for me, the concept of this kind of like luxury collaboration kind of came around when Marc Jacobs was the creative director of Louis Vuitton. So think like 2000s, I think it stretched like a little bit into the 2010s as well. When we talk about what he had done for Louis Vuitton, he actually invited these artists like Takashi Murakami, Ray Kawakubo from Comme des Garçons, and even uh, Yayo Kusama and Steven Sprouse to come in and shake things up. He had them play with the monogram. He had them uh, create prints and patterns and different bag shapes and really just test kind of the limits of what luxury fashion meant. Way back when, seeing it in magazines and eventually seeing it in real life, I think it was really shocking in like the best way possible. It was uh, irreverence in a way where it's like, yes, of course, I am the creative director. This is Mark Jacobs, by the way. Yes, I'm the creative director and I do know what all these house codes mean, but let's see what we can do to, I don't know, mess around, <laughs> I guess. But then for me, that was kind of like, like the first taste of it, I guess you could say. Taste? Sure. But then, like, since then, we've seen so many different kinds of collaborations. We've seen luxury and luxury, like the Hacker Project with Gucci Balenciaga. We've seen Fendace coming around recently. Athletic brands mixing with luxury, like uh, Adidas. They worked with Prada, Balenciaga, and Gucci. And then, of course, we have, like, Nike and Louis Vuitton. And then Louis Vuitton, of course, loves playing with streetwear with Human Made and Supreme. We've also seen these like, I would say unconventional pairings, like Mischief, this kind of like disruptive art slash design house, I guess. I don't know exactly how to describe them, but they collabed with Tiffany and it was like a legit collaboration. Loewe Studio Ghibli, which that's like, mm, love that obviously. And then even like Fendi Skims, Dior, Ramoa, just a bunch of like weird things. That's not even like a complete list of all the collaborations that have happened between like, obviously like Louis Vuitton, Marc Jacobs, collaborating with different artists. That was like a little bit ways away, but then I think one of the main things to start it was Louis Vuitton Supreme. And if you talk about from then as, let's call that the starting point, to now, what I listed before was not even the full list, it's kind of insane. And there's different things happening, like, I, it almost feels like every other month or even every month we're getting something new and something either surprising or maybe not so surprising, but unexpected. It's just getting to the point where it's like so much, where it feels almost like repetition in a way and it starts to feel like a cash grab. So I wanted to grab this to kind of just talk about this as like stopping, not a stopping point, but like a, a pinpoint just to, kind of set a time frame. So the Gucci Aria runway, which celebrated the house's 100th year, had the collaboration of the Hacker Project with Balenciaga as a part of it. That happened in summer of 2021. And since then, I, I think I can count, easily count like 10 different collaborations that happened with luxury houses since then. And this is still like a pretty new bag. It's getting to the point where it feels almost like a cash grab. There are definitely some of these collaborations that feel very meaningful and very purposeful, but it gets to a point where it's kind of just the same thing of, oh, here, let's put a Gucci shoe with the Adidas Trifoil logo on it. Oh, but then we're also going to have 
Prada do the same thing with the three stripes going down a pair of pants. If you guys know me at all, I love these collaborations so much, but it's getting to the point where it's almost like manufactured hype where it's like, okay, this was super exciting. This was crazy. And it felt like something fresh and new. And now we're getting to the point where I've seen the same pair of pants across three different brands because they're all collaborating with the same one. I mean, sure, like some of them are doing them better than the others, but then it still is to the point where it's like, okay, you're wearing a pair of like, whatever the houses take on Adidas track pants. That's, I'm, I'm getting a little tired. Okay, I brought up a new bag. So, well, it's not new but a different bag for you to see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then on top of the kind of quantity of what we're seeing and the repetition and how not only is it starting to feel like a cash grab, but it goes a little bit into what I was talking about before. Because there's so much repetition, it's almost like we're starting to see just whatever the fancy like blended logo is put onto something. And it's not for everything in every collection, obviously, but when you look at like for, take for example Fendace. Fendace, they had shirts and some of the bags and it just had like the Fendace logo on it and there was not much thought behind that. For me, it's where's the quality of design? Where is the excitement coming from to actually drive this hype? Now, of course, like Fendace, they did have some really beautiful like silk bags that were that very iconic Versace print onto the Fendi baguette. Amazing, it's beautiful. Using like rhinestones in a way that Fendi would never do, also amazing. But then when you start to see all of these, and I'm not trying to be like such a downer, but it is getting so disappointing where it's like, not only are these collaborations, like it's starting to feel like manufactured hype, but then these pieces are so expensive. And what are you getting from them? You're getting a regular bag with a print on it. But then I bring this up because I think this is one of the reasons why I like the Loewe Studio Ghibli collab so much because when they do their collaborations, they use their like craftsmanship to kind of elevate what they're doing in a way. So like this, like you could see this bag and you can think it's a print and it's like, okay, sure, whatever. But then when you actually look at it, they use the marquetry technique, which I know I talk about it a million times, so if you've seen any of those videos, I'm sorry, but if you're new here, marquetry is when they like, it's pretty much they laser cut the leather so that it fits perfectly, kind of like a puzzle piece. And then they use whatever leather bonding glue, whatever. Doing something like this that actually affects the construction of the bag rather than just a print, for me, that adds the quality. And a lot of what I've been seeing recently is literally just printing on like a Kensington mule or basically any like a Prada sneaker or something like that, whatever it is. I recognize that you can't make everything exciting because then the exciting things won't seem as exciting. I don't know, it's also like how many times can I say exciting? But please do something more exciting. Like even when Loewe and Studio Ghibli do a clap, yeah, there are less exciting things, but they still use a little bit of craftsmanship when it comes to it. You get that artisanal feel, whether it's like embroidery or stitching in an interesting way, just something like that. And for me, that's, it needs to be heading in this direction. Otherwise, like, we're just gonna get the same, like, carbon copies of everything, and honestly, people aren't gonna buy them, I think. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy them. Let's put it that way. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, kind of like current events, like, ooh, this is your, like, morning school news report. Let's talk about, I don't know. I don't miss high school. So let's take a look at what's recently happening. I mean, Dior and ERL recently put out a collaboration, which was a really lovely surprise for me. I really like ERL and they do interesting things with stitching and padding and oftentimes color. But then if you look at the actual collaboration, they kind of like took away a little bit of that colorfulness and really relied on the structure of the pieces, which I think is still works, but then having all of these beautifully, like, interesting shaped padded pieces, but just in, like, a gray, sure, it might be, like, a higher quality material versus, like, a nylon or polyester. But then, I don't know, it takes away a little bit of the, the fun and effervescence for me. But then you can still kind of see, like, oh, okay, this is where, like, the houses meet. I'm like, okay, sure, I get that. So that was fine, but then, okay, I will say, I haven't personally 
bought anything from Jacques Mou, although I do have something on on my eye. In my eye? I have something on my in my in my caught my eye. Something that caught my eye is the Nike Jacques Mou collaboration. Oh yeah, no, but there is one piece that caught my eye. But Okay, full circle moment, which is funny because uh, the bag that I like from Jacques Mou is a circle. Anyways, oh my god. The Nike Jacques Mou collaboration, I think, is A, it's being marketed very well. It's just like these little snippets. Uh, we're getting images of some of the products, maybe they're prototypes, but it's from far away, so you can't really see exactly what it is. When we're talking about like the other sportswear brands, I think like Sure, Adidas Prada makes sense because they're both kind of sporty. Nike and Louis Vuitton even make sense to me a bit because, uh, you know, when Virgil Abloh was at the helm, he really brought Louis Vuitton men's to like a very streetwear level. So it started feeling more natural. So, you know, Louis Vuitton Nike also made sense. But then Jacques Mou is such a, it's almost like a, I would call it like a pretty band, brand. It's like, it's very sexy, but it's also very pretty. It's very like light, airy. But then the mix between like Nike as this like very like, athletic or like streetwear kind of brand mixed with like the it's almost kind of like a, a femininity that Jacques Mou has when it comes to any of the pieces that he's made really. I think that's so freaking exciting. <laughs> the collab is dropping on the 28th so if this is before then there's your tip. It's dropping on 28th on the Jacques Mou website and then it's going to Nike afterwards. I don't know exactly when but I'm gonna put some images up because I just think some of the, the imagery is very beautiful. Like there's one image of, uh, it looks like it's probably some sort of like sporty dress, but then on the back there's like a thin leather band with the Nike logo and metal. Some sort of metal looks like a brass or whatever. For me, I'm like, okay, I'm like actually getting excited for this because I'm kind of a sucker for these collaborations. That's why I'm like getting burnt out because like I love to pay attention to these. But then this is the first one in a while that's really caught my eye with A, the marketing was great. B, the products are starting to look really interesting and C, just the concept of these two brands coming together I think is super interesting. So I bet you all are thinking like, Justin, okay, we get it. You're talking. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm not a hater when it comes to these collaborations. Is this my camera? I'm not a hater when it comes to these collaborations. <laughs> Some of the most interesting pieces that are coming out in our time have come from these collaborations. But then when we're, oh my God, this is going to expose me as like ugly. <laughs> but like when you take a look at like some of the mashups they had in that one, I feel like there was a whole episode about mashups on Glee or something like that, whatever. A lot of mashups, like unless you actually like think about what the content of the song is, along with like the melody and the BPM, whatever, like it just doesn't really make sense. And that's kind of what's happening with these collaborations. Like for me, like Loewe and Studio Ghibli. Loewe is this brand that really speaks to this artisanal type of craftsmanship. And Studio Ghibli is this very like sensitive animation where you have really the mix just kind of makes sense. It just, it just makes sense. I don't know, it's very emotional and it touches into like more of the feeling as well as obviously the look, but then it has a lot to do with like the feeling and kind of like joy, curiosity, things like that. And then when you take a look at Gucci Balenciaga, especially recently, Gucci has been very much like very nerdy. And then super recently, there's been an even more like overt sexuality when it comes to it. So having that kind of harsh contrast within that house itself. And then Balenciaga. Demna is known for these like very exaggerated, like it's almost like grotesque figures. So like the mashup of those, it, it becomes too much, which means it makes enough, which I think is beautiful like that. And then again, talking about Jacques Mou Nike, this very like feminine, ethereal kind of brand in Jacques Mou, mixing with this very like grounded, practical, uh, athletic, streetwear y kind of brand that Nike has turned itself into. It's another one that just doesn't really make sense. And in that way, it makes sense, you know? Like, there's actual thought behind the ways that they come together. What I'm trying to say is that when we're taking a look at all these exciting collaborations that are coming out, like, is there actually something that is holding these houses together or like pulling them apart? Like, are they at odds? And 
having either like a really strong similarity or a strong contrast is what's going to make it interesting. And I think for my sanity, I think I'm going to mostly f like keep an eye out just for the ones that I can kind of read like, okay, these two houses do not make sense or these two houses absolutely make sense. And then I'll let all the stuff that's in between kind of fall to the floor. Who knows, maybe I'll find a piece from one of them that I find interesting and maybe I'll get it or not, whatever. It's just being aware and being having a little bit of knowledge of background so that you know you can make an informed decision like is this something to watch is this something to want because otherwise it's like okay what's the lasting impact and are you just buying a piece that's is exciting now but then once the hype dies down is it actually going to be something that you want to keep in your collection but that's all i have for you guys today if you like this video please make sure to like and subscribe it lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you too care about the design behind designer luxury until next time